Hello and welcome. Here is a dirty little secret about the stock market. If you just buy and hold the S&P 500, your risk isn't constant. Sometimes you are barely taking any risk at all, like in 2017 when markets were dead con. And sometimes you are taking way too much risk, like in 2008 or March 2020 when volatility spiked and your portfolio blew up. That's why hedge funds almost never just buy and hold. They use risk-based sizing. One of the simplest and most powerful is called volatility targeting. The idea is almost stupidly simple. Scale your exposure down in chaotic times and scale it up when the market is quiet. And here's the crazy part. Just doing this one tweak with no forecasting, no machine learning, nothing fancy, often gives you higher sharp ratios, smaller drawdowns and sometimes even better returns. Let me prove it to you in Python in about 20 lines of code. After importing a couple of necessary libraries, I'm setting some parameters here, which I will get to in a couple of seconds. This is just downloading SPY data starting in 2015 and this is calculating daily returns. This is nothing new until now. This is the important part, starting with this one here, realized. I estimate realized volatility with a 20 day rolling standard deviation and annualize that by the square root of 252. That gives me a daily estimate of how risky the market looked over the last month. And this pause line here is the critical line of code. So let's break that down. Target vol divided by realized. This is the core idea. If my target vol is 15% as I defined here, and let's say my realized vol would be 30%. Then 15% divided by 30% would be 50%. So I only want half exposure. If the realized vol is let's say 7.5%, then 15% divided by 7.5% would be 200. That means double exposure. Now, this replace 0.0, .0 NPNAN avoids dividing by zero doing very quiet streaks. And clip 0.0, .0 and leverage cap keeps the position between zero and 1.5x. Without that, in ultra calm markets, the formula might tell me go 3x or 4x leveraged, which simply isn't realistic. So I'm capping that here at 1.5 leverage. Shift one means we always trade tomorrow using today's information so we don't have a look ahead bias. And fill in A, zero ensures we hold cash before we have enough data to compute volatility. Now, you might ask yourself, why do I need leverage? What is this about? This is a key point. Volatility targeting is about keeping risk constant, not just cutting exposure when markets are wild. It also means scaling up when risk is very cheap. Let's take two examples. If volatility spikes to 20% and my target is 15%, then 15% divided by 20% is 0.75. So I scale down to 75% exposure. No leverage needed here. But if volatility collapses to 5%, then 15% divided by 5% is 3.0, so 300%. So to actually run at 15% risk, I need 300% exposure. If I cap myself at 1x, I'm massively underinvested in exactly the calm, stable regime where risk adjusted returns are best. 
That's why professional implementations allow some leverage, but always, of course, with a cap. In this example, as said, I cap it at 1.5x. It's not about being reckless, it's about keeping risk steady across different environments. Next, I add trading costs. Every change in pause is a rebalance. So I compute turnover as the difference of pause and then the absolute and apply a small five basis point cost. That's a rough proxy for bidder spreads and commissions. Now I build two return streams, buy and hold, that's just the SPY's daily returns and the vol target strategy, pause times red minus the cost. That is the position scaled returns minus costs. So we are comparing two versions of the same underlying asset. One takes whatever risk the market gives you, the other normalizes risk around 15% with a cap at 1.5x, as just explained. All right, time to actually measure performance. We'll do this in two parts. First, a function to calculate the key metrics and then some plots to visualize how the strategy behaves compared to buy and hold. Let's start with the stats function. Drop an A is just cleaning the return series in case they're missing values. And this one is super important. This is the Kager calculation. Here in this line, years, I take the total length of the series in calendar years. That's important because Kager is about how much your money grows per actual year, not per trading day. That's why I divide by 365 something, not 252. Then total and Kager compounds all the returns together, then annualizes it. So Kager is, if you started with $1, what constant growth rate per year would get you to the same final value? Next one is volatility. Here as D is the daily standard deviation of returns. I multiply it then by the square root of 252 to analyze it because volatility scales with the square root of time and risk is measured on trading days. And this is simply the sharp ratio that's the average daily return divided by daily volatility annualized tells us how much return we are getting per unit of risk. The higher the sharp, the more efficient the return or returns. And finally, a max drawdown. I track the cumulative return curve, compare it to the running maximum and take the minimum. That gives the worst peak to through loss the strategy ever saw. Now let's execute this so we see what we're actually getting here. And this is actually quite interesting. So you see we have the volatility target strategy versus buy and hold here. So Kager slightly outperforming the buy and hold by a marginal amount here. So this doesn't really matter, but we got a higher sharp ratio as expected than buy and hold. We got a volatility around the target volatility, which totally makes sense. We got a lower max drawdown than for the bind hold strategy. So this strategy definitely outperforms the bind hold strategy. Now, what's interesting here is what we just saw, but you can of course tweak the parameters here. So for instance, you could ask yourself what is happening if I scale up the target volatility to 25%, then you just execute everything again. And then you see the strategy is running even better as expected. You're taking more risks here. So you're getting a higher Kager compared to buy and hold. You're getting a better sharp ratio, but this time it is a bit smaller difference between the two. Then you have a target volatility again around the past target volatility and you have a slightly lower maximum drawdown here. 
Also an interesting one here, I didn't cover that yet. This is the development of your position. So you see you are at 1.5 leverage here, then you go down in leverage, then you go up again, down, up again. So you see the interesting market phases here, how your strategy or how your positioning is reacting. Now, I hope you found this as interesting, as fascinating, as insightful as I found this. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Play a bit around with that. And I thank you very much for watching and looking forward to seeing you in the upcoming videos. Cheers. Bye. Bye.